Okay, so let's go through this entire review worksheet. I have my calculator here, and so should you. And here we go. Number one, convert to radians. We have 420 degrees. To turn this into radians, we multiply by pi over 180. On the calculator, I would just type in 420 over 180, hit enter, and it should reduce it to 7 thirds. So write 7 thirds and just attach the pi symbol for yourself. You don't have to type in the pi in the calculator if you don't want to. And just put like rads for like radians. So that'd be the answer. 7 pi over 3 or 7 thirds pi radians. Done, done, done. For number 2, the same idea. Negative 675. So the fastest way is to take 675 divided by 180. 675 over 180. The Casio says 15 over 4. What I'll do for myself is attach the negative and attach the pi and the abbreviation rads. Done. Question number three, kind of backwards for three and four. We have 38 pi over nine radians. We want to turn this into degrees. So we're going to multiply by 180 over pi. I wouldn't type this into the calculator because the pi's are gone. You can, if you want, type in the numbers that are left into a calculator. You're going to go 38 times 180 all over nine and hit enter. If you want, put parentheses around the numerator just to play it safe. I think that's going to be 760 degrees. So let's call this 760 degrees. Let me double check my arithmetic on that. Excellent. Then question number four. We have negative 23 pi over four. So we multiply by 180 over pi. The pi's always knock out. So let's just go 23 times 180. Hit enter first and then divide by four after. So negative 1035 degrees. Done. Question number five. Draw each angle in standard position. So we have 430 degrees. So go to the open plane and we need 430 degrees. It's positive. So you know you're going to go in the counterclockwise direction. So, so far that's 360. In order to reach 430, I need 70 more, right? Because 360 and 70 adds up to 430. So from the 360 that I have, let me continue about 70 degrees more and then stop it there, slam on the brakes there, and that's it. If you want, you could just be like, you could point at the answer and be like, hey, this is 430 degrees, although you don't really have to. And I'm not going to take out like a ruler or a protractor or a compass or any tools to really measure if this really is, you know, like the extra 70. It's not like that. Just make sure that the angle terminates in the correct quadrant. Mm -hmm. Question six. Negative 43 pi over 18 radians. We want a picture. I'm going to go ahead and turn this into degrees, as we did earlier. So let's multiply this by 180 over pi. The pi's are gone. 43 times 180, hit enter. Divide by 18, hit enter. We have 430 degrees, but they're negative. Because it started negative, it's still negative. So let's graph negative 430. So negative 430 degrees, we're basically graphing negative 430. That would be clockwise 360. Isn't that pretty much the same thing as before, just the negative version? Wait, hold up. 43 times 180. Wow. So five and six are the same angle. This is one's positive and one's negative. I swear I did not know that happened. But anyways, it should be something like this, right? Negative 360 and then negative 70 more. That one there. Yeah, I'm going to change that for the future classes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Number seven. Sketch one period of the given sine wave. So for number seven, make a list of A, B, H, and K. A, B, H, and K. Identify A, B, H, and K for number seven. So A is negative six. B is two-fifths. K is negative 3 pi over 8. Careful with that one. 
And then that was H rather. H is negative three pi eighths and K is four. So our three lines, we know we, we need uh, the middle, the top and the bottom. Let's say, let me just delete this real fast here. There we go. Let's say we have the top, the middle, and the bottom. The middle line is going to be at y equals k, which is 4. The top, well, whatever a is, take the absolute value, and that's your, your amplitude. So from the middle at 4, we're going to go up 6 units. So that brings you to the 10th floor. Go back down to the middle and go down six floors. That takes you to the negative second floor. Top, middle, bottom. Now we need a start point. We know the start point is H comma K. And we also know that because A is negative, that the sine wave is gonna open down first, and then it's gonna open up. We know that much. Then give them the beginning and give them the end. The beginning isn't too bad because it's just the beginning is just h comma k. So that'd be h comma k. And we know that the end point, we know the y coordinate is also k, which is four in this case. We just have to find the x coordinate of the end. And in order to do that, we need the period. And we know that period equals two pi over b, where b is two fifths. Simplify this number however you'd like. Your devices should tell you that the period is 5 pi. You take the period and you add it to h, the beginning x, and that tells you the end x. So on a calculator, or by hand, however, you want to go 5 pi added to negative 3 pi over 8. That should give you 37 pi over eight. Check the answer game. Yep, yeah, mm -hmm, there it is. Yeah, 37 pi over eight, uh, pi, 37 pi over eight, rather, uh, for the x at the very end. So we have beginning and the graph opens down because a was negative. And then we have our beginning and end point, right? Our three lines, top, middle, and bottom. Same idea for eight, essentially, it's just that for number eight, it's cosecant. But what we'll do for number eight is let's just pretend that it's sine. The whole time for number eight, let's just pretend we're graphing sine, and then we'll actually graph cosecant uh, thereafter. So watch. So here, the same thing. A, B, H, and K. A, B, H, and K. So A is 2. B is 3 fourths. H is positive pi fifths. And then K is negative 6. So the same idea. Let's go top. Let's go middle and let's go bottom, where the middle is y equals uh, k, which is negative six. The amplitude is two, so let's go up two, and then let's go down two. We have top, middle, and bottom. Now, let's pretend this is sine. For now, let's just pretend that this is a sine wave. The a value is positive, so you know that the graph is gonna go up first, and then it's gonna go down. So let's put the beginning there and let's put the end there. And the middle is there. We're gonna go up first and then we're gonna go down after, okay? And we, we can fill in the other two points, the second point and the fourth point. And we know per lecture that we're gonna have vertical asymptotes to the first, third, and fifth point. And we know that the cosecant wave, which is the goal, it makes contact with the sine wave at the second and fourth points. We know that. And so we can actually graph cosecant right now. The only thing left for us to do is to provide maybe the equations of these three vertical asymptotes. And we know that the equations are x equals x equals x equals. So like x equals, x equals, and x equals for your three vertical asymptotes. Wait, let me make sure before I go any further. I think my, I think my, um, my camera was off. 
don't think it really matters because you're looking at the math, not me, but let me just turn it back on just in case. All right, as we were. So let's try to find our three vertical lines. We know that the first vertical line is just the X coordinate of the start. The start point is there. The X coordinate is K, which is pi over five. So we know the first one is pi over five. Now let's find the last one. So go period and add it to K. So we know our period is going to be 2 pi divided by b, which is 3 fourths. So 2 pi over 3 fourths is going to be 8 pi over 3. So our period is 8 pi over 3. 8 pi over 3. So now let's focus on the end point, the very, very, very end. To find the end, you take the period and you add it to your h. So let's go 8 pi over 3 plus pi over 5. 8 pi over 3 plus pi over 5. On your calculator, just type in 8 over 3 plus 1 over 5. I get 43 over 15. 43 over 15. I get 43 over 15 pi for the end x, which is also where that vertical asymptote cuts through. The only thing left to find is the middle one, right? Just the middle one. So recall to find the middle asymptote, you find the average of the first and last. You find the average of the first and last by adding them together, dividing them by two. So you go pi fifths plus 43 pi fifteenths, hit equals, divide by two, hit equals, and your devices will tell you that the middle line or the middle asymptote is at 23 over 15 pi. And if you want to bring some sort of importance to, to, to cosecant, you could, with an eraser, you could maybe let, like, you, you could uh, erase a little bit of, of the sine wave, right? You could erase, you could erase some of these. You could put like little empty spaces to make the sign less important because the goal is to graph cosecant, which is like this bit and this bit down there. But I won't be too picky with that. Just keep in mind though that the goal is cosecant. All right, moving on. Let's go to question number nine here. So let's turn the page over. Word problem. So you're lying down on the roof of a tall building, which, all right, so there's a building, there's the ground. Let's say that's the building there. You're like here. Naturally, your eyes would look straight ahead, but there's a fancy car down there and it catches your attention. So your eyes would be looking straight ahead, but no, -uh, you look down. So this up here, that is your angle of depression. That's where the 70 degrees goes. I know it's tempting to say that the 70 degrees is there, but no. -uh. Because the idea is you naturally look ahead. And from that viewpoint, you look down your angle of depression. And so the 70 degrees would actually go there. So that's 70 degrees. And that helps us because that's going to be congruent to this angle down here. These guys, these angles are like alternate interior angles from geometry, right? Your line of sight and the ground, assuming they're parallel. Your depression angle is the same as your elevation. angle. So we have 70 degrees for the angle of depression and elevation. And we know that the car is 65 feet from the base of the building. The goal is to find X, the height of the building. So from this, we have this triangle. We have 70, we have 65, and we have X. Find X by using either sine, cosine, or tangent. Based on what we have, it looks like tangent is the way to go. Tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So from this position, your opposite is X, your adjacent is 5. To solve this equation, maybe we can multiply both sides by 5. These cancel. 65. What am I thinking? 65. 65. 65, okay? Yeah, so 65, right? X over 65. Multiply both sides by 65. And on your calculator, type in 65 times tangent of 70. And you should get about 179 feet for the building. If you didn't get 179, then your calculator is in radians. Ooh. Make sure you know what mode you should be in on the exam, right? Am I in degrees or am I in radians? You want to make sure you know what you, what you have, what you're supposed to be in. That was nine, that was question nine. Question 10, 
state the measure of the given angle. So for number 10, we have a spiral looking thing that looks like, let's see, so we have, what is that, two revolutions and some change? It looks like it's like this here. And it tells us that this snippet here is 35 degrees. Yep, that's good. And the goal is to find the measure of the spiral. So maybe what I can do in green, maybe I can sort of, do I have a highlighter here? Let's see if this works. So look, cool. All right, so look, so, so far that green, that's 360. I know it's negative, but so far it's 360. Let me continue with the green. And there, that's another 360. See that? So I have a couple of 360s. And then I have 35 more. So you add those up on a calculator, 720 and 35 is 755. So we have 755 degrees, but it's negative because of the direction in which it opened. And yes, I'm looking at the key because I don't trust my arithmetic. That's good, negative 755. So you could always like piece together a spiral and, and add together the smaller chunks of the whole. Uh, let's see, 11 now. Let me get rid of this highlighter. Let's go back to a regular pencil. That's not it. There we go. So 11 now. The graph for 11 looks like, what do we have? Boom, boom, boom. So we have something like this, it looks like. And then we have like that there. And in a different color, they say that this bit is 75. So let, let's do the same thing. Let me go to red. Let me go to a highlighter and let's piece this together. So, so far, so far, that so far is positive 360. Let's continue. Let me, let me continue in a different color actually, so you can see the differences. Let's go in blue. Okay, so like that, the blue, the blue has contributed 270, right? 270. And now here in purple and purple, boom, that little snippet, look, that little purple one, that's got to be 15 because that's 75. And you know that a quadrant, a whole quadrant gives you 90 degrees, right? It sections off 90 degrees. So if that's 15 there, if that's 75, that's got to be 15 because it adds up to 90. And that 15 is what we want to throw into our subtotal. Tap these up. 360 plus 270 plus 15. 645 degrees, 645. I asked myself, is this positive or negative? It was counterclockwise, so it's positive. Just leave it as is, 645 degrees. And let's keep going here. Question number 12. So what do we have? We have tangent of theta, negative seven fifths, and it's given that sine is positive. Well, what quadrant is that, folks? Is that one, two, three, or four? Well, sine is positive because sine is affiliated with the y coordinate. Sine has connections to like a y coordinate or like an opposite, like a height. So the y coordinate ish is positive. That's either one or two, right? So that part alone narrows down this situation to either quadrant one or quadrant two. Here in this problem, you have to know which quadrant to go to. Is it one, two, three, or four? Sine positive means one or two. Now let's narrow this down fully. Tangent is negative because it literally says a negative. So in which quadrant is tangent negative between one and two? Well, it's not one because everybody's positive in one. So process of elimination, we know that we are to go to quadrant two. And that's what your triangle should look like in quadrant two. In quadrant two, your triangle should not look like this. No, 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 no. It should look like that, that's how you want to model this, okay? So we have tangent is Sokotoa, opposite over adjacent. So the opposite is seven and the adjacent is negative five because you move to the left. Seven's positive because you went up. Pythagorean tells us that this is the square root of 74. Now what's the goal? <laughs> I mean, what's the, what are we trying to do? The goal is to find 74 cosecant squared of theta. So a pro tip, cosine squared theta, that looks kind of weird, like the, the notation. That is equal to just regular cosine theta quantity squared. That's more user-friendly. So let's find cosine of theta for ourselves. What would be 
cosine of theta. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. My adjacent is uh, my adjacent is negative five, and my hypotenuse is square root seventy four. So that's cosine. Now we have to square it, and then we have to times it by seventy four. So we have square root seventy four over five. Let's see, square root seventy four over five. We have square root seventy four over negative five to the power of two times 74. Yeah, okay, hopefully you're looking at me kind of funny because I totally just took an L. Did I do it on purpose? Eh, well, look, because we're trying to find cosine, right? And then cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. What did I write here? That doesn't look like adjacent over hypotenuse. That looks like hypotenuse over adjacent. That looks like secant. So if you're with me, you should have been like, nah, Lee, you're messing up. Yeah, so what's cosine, right? Cosine, cosine of theta, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want to square and then times it by 74. So here we go. Let me, let me show my work here nice and pretty. Let's get rid of all this. Okay, so the goal here, 74 cosine squared theta equals, so that's going to be 74 times, it was negative 5 over square root 74 to the power of 2. Boom, that's the setup right there. If you type that into your devices or if you just stare at this and logically simplify it, you should get 25 for your final, final, final answer uh, for question number 12. All right? 13. Let's keep trucking along here. Let's go back to blue. Number 13, here we go. So we have secant. Oh, I'm going to show you a really cool trick here. I'm going to show you a pretty cool trick. Watch. So, so we know, we know per our trig identities, we know that cosine of theta equals one over secant of theta. We know that sine is the same as one over cosecant of theta and vice versa, right? Vice versa. What, 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 secant, secant is the same as one over cosine. And then cosecant is the same as one over sine, right? And vice versa, right? The reciprocals. The point is they're reciprocals. So here's what I'm trying to show you. If you know, if you know, let, let's say they tell you, hey, secant of theta equals two over three, that automatically tells you that cosine is three over two. If they say, hey, cosecant of theta equals seven over 13, okay, thank you. That tells me that sine of theta is 13 over seven. You can turn secant into cosine as long as you reciprocate the other side. You can turn cosecant into sine as long as you reciprocate the other side. How come this is nice? Well, because me personally, I'd rather play with sines instead of cosecants. I'd rather deal with cosine instead of secant. And that kind of applies to what we have here for number 13, because it tells us that secant of theta equals four over one which implies that cosine of theta equals one over four. Now, what quadrant are we in? What quadrant are we supposed to go to, right? So it says tangent is positive. So tangent is positive for sure here and also there because we call tangent, it, go, it goes kind of like y over x. It divides the coordinates and it's positive. And if you divide the coordinate and it's positive, maybe both coordinates are positive or Maybe both coordinates are negative because a negative divided by a negative is pretty much a positive. So we've narrowed it down to either quadrants one or three. Which one is it though? Well, it can be three because it tells us that cosine is positive and cosine has connections with an X coordinate or like an adjacent. And since cosine is positive, it has to be quadrant one. So we know that we're playing in quadrant one. We are operating in quadrant one and we have deduced, let's try that again. We have deduced that cosine of theta is a quarter. What's the goal? The goal is square root 15 cotangent of pi halves minus theta. Hey, pi halves is the same as 90 degrees. 90 minus theta, you've seen that many, many times. 90 minus theta just refers to the name of this corner pocket there. Yes, if this is theta, this can be called 90 minus theta. So this is telling us to go and position yourselves there. And from here, 
from there, give them cotangent. So let's see. We know where we're supposed to go. We're supposed to go here and give them cotangent. But maybe first we can actually put the sides on this triangle. We know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 1, and that's going to be 4. Pythagorean says this is going to be square root 15. So now let's finish this problem. So we know we have square root 15 times, well, we want a cotangent from this position. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. My adjacent is square root 15, and my opposite is 1. So if you go square root 15 times square root 15, you should get just good old number 15 for number, what number was this? This was number 13. Yeah. So as the answer key says, final answer, 15. Okay, where are we? This That was number 13. <laughs> the answer was 15 on number 13. So now let's go to 14. 14. So we have f of x is tangent, and then we have g as negative cosecant x. Now for part a, they want f plus g, f plus g of 11 pi over 4. Well, this is open calculator, so in a minute, we're going to use our calculators big time for this problem. Well, f plus g, so these functions are being added together. So this would have come f of 11 pi over 4 plus g of 11 pi over 4. So go to functions f and g respectively and plug in 11 pi over 4. And that would look like this. That'd look like tangent of 11 pi over 4 plus negative cosecant of 11 pi over 4. And then literally just type that into your devices. Make sure that you are in radians. Mm -hmm, radians. And as we saw, the answer should be negative 1 minus square root 2, right? I think there was a typo on, on the printout, but it should be negative 1 minus square root 2. Your devices should automatically give you that there. Do you have to use a calculator? No, you could find co-terminal angles on the unit circle to get this answer. So you do that however you want. Just make sure you know how to set this up with these functions, f and g. That was 14a. Yeah, and then 14b... 14b has g of eight, 803 pi over 2. So for part b, we have g of 803 pi over 2. And so if you plug that into g, that would look like negative cosecant of 803 pi over 2. Oh, and you know what? So something that I should have mentioned in part a, but I'll mention it here now. How are you supposed to type in cosecant if your calculator doesn't have that button? So recall that cosecant of x is the same as 1 over sine of x. So if you don't have cosecant, you can just go 1 on top, and in the bottom, type in sine of the angle that you were trying to type in. So that means for this problem here for part b, and also going back to part a, what you can do is type this in instead. Keep the negative. Just put a 1 on the top, and in the bottom, type in sine of the 803 pi over two. Hit enter and you'll get whatever the answer key says. For 14b, it is just one. And the same goes for secant, right? The same goes for secant. Your calculator doesn't have the secant button. So if you wanna find like the secant of, let's say three pi over seven, what you can instead type in is one over cosine three pi over seven. Because for sure your calculator has the cosine button. Maybe not the seeking button. Yeah. All right, we are on number 15. Oh, that's the, that's like the word problem with uh, a circle. All right, so, so we have, yeah, we have a circle, and it says that the radius is 17 feet. And it says you're only going to tile off 75%. So you, you, you're you going to tile off or, or, or fill this in with grass or something some tiles. Yeah, so first let's find the area, right? Let's find the area of this. So recall from the first week of class, there was a formula given to you, one half, what was it, r squared theta, where that's the radius, right? That's the radius. And this is theta in radians, right? You got to be in radians for, for angle theta. 
So we know the radius is 17. The question is, what is, the, what is this angle here, right, in radians? Well, it is three-fourths of a circle, right? So if you know the circle is 360, 75% of that would be 270 degrees, right? And 270 degrees in radians would be 3 pi over 2. So for the area of this shaded bit, the area should be 1 half 17 squared times 3 pi over 2. Let me actually type that in. So we have 0.5 times 289 times 3 times pi divided by 2. So as a decimal, it's about 680.94 square feet. But then they say that every square foot costs you $5.25. So you times this by $5.25 and you get about $3,575. So $3,575, that, that's what the key has. That's how much money you'd need to, to complete this project, right? And that's one way of doing this problem. You could do this problem with a more middle schoolish way. I don't care how you do these problems, do them however you want, just make sure it's, it's logically sound. Let's see, 16. So we have for 16, we have cosine of theta equals P, tangent of theta equals Q. And for part A, we want cosine of negative theta plus the tangent of theta plus 14 pi. Well, per your even odd, yeah, per your even odd identities, it says that cosine of negative theta is the same as cosine of positive theta. And per our periodics, tangent of theta plus 14 pi can just be flattened down to become cosine of uh, theta. Any even pi would be knocked out for tangent. As a matter of fact, any integer pi could be knocked out for tangent. So that could have been a 14 or a 13. Either way, it would have canceled. But not if it was sine or cosine. If it was sine or cosine, it has to be an even pi, uh, an even pi, two pi, four pi, four million pi. For sine and cosine, it has to be an even pi that's added to your theta. But for tangent, any integer pi could be knocked out. So here we have tangent, 14 pi, it goes away. Cosine of theta is equal to P by definition, plus tangent of theta is Q. Final answer, P plus Q. Q. Part B. We have the cotangent of theta plus the cosine of theta plus 360 with a bunch of zeros. It doesn't matter how many zeros, as long as it ends with a zero, you know that's going to knock out because it's just a bunch of, you're just going in circles, getting really dizzy, but at the end, you're just pointing in the same direction. So theta plus 360n would just be knocked out. Here, cotangent theta, how about we write this? How about cotangent becomes one over tangent theta? And then here, cosine theta is just cosine theta because at 360-ish, it goes away. And now this gives us one over Q plus P, done. Right, cotangent is one over tangent. One stays on top. Tangent below becomes Q. One over Q plus P, done, done, done. 17, we're almost there, folks. 17, provide an equation for the given sine wave. Okay, 17, I think I've been not numbering these things. Let's go like that there, let's go like this here, and it ends there. We have the beginning and we have the end. So here the coordinates are negative five pi over four, comma negative one, and the end point is at 11 pi over four, comma negative one, and this fourth point, is at seven pi fourths comma negative four. We want the equation for sine. So we know that we need A, B, H, and K. We need A, B, H, and K. We know what K is. We know, let me get my camera out of the way. Let me put this picture over there. We know what K is. K is gonna be anything on the middle line, which is gonna be these ones. So we know, that K is negative one. 
from the middle, how much do we go either up or down? Well, look at the middle and then look at the Y's. Compare the Y's. That is a movement of three spaces. So you know A is going to be three, but is it positive three or is it negative three? Well, the graph goes up first and then it goes down. So you know A is going to be positive. So positive three for A. Now let's find H. H is the start coordinate. It's the start X coordinate, right? It's the X coordinate of the start point, which in this case is negative five pi over four. Now to find B, you have to consult the period. Period equals two pi over B. Another way to look at period is the last X minus the first X, right? The last X here minus the first X there. So to look at the period that way, we would discover that we have 11 pi over four minus negative five pi over four. Double negative is positive. Common denominators are established. That's convenient. 16 pi over four, which is just four pi. The period is four pi. The period is four pi. So what we can do is go to your formula and instead of P, write down four pi. So let me do that now. So we have four pi there. Do your math logically here. You would discover that B is one half. How, just to be clear, how would you find that you can multiply both sides by B and then you can divide by four pi. The pi's cancel. You have two above four, which reduces down to one half. So we have found B one half. So our final answer would look like y equals a parentheses sine parentheses b which was one half x plus five pi over four close both parentheses minus one uh, it's, it's a plus because the formula always says minus right by default it's x minus h but since h was a negative it met the other subtraction symbol and the double negative became positive right 18 19 and then 20. 18. So we want to evaluate the cotangent of the cosine inverse of 3 over 5. So for a problem like this, I would focus on the inner function and call it, I would let, I would let the inner function, I would let that equal some angle theta. Always allow the inner part, if it's an inverse, if, if it's an inverse, let that inner part equal some angle theta. If you take the cosine of both sides, right? If you take the cosine of the left, if you take the cosine of the right, the cosines would cancel. That tells us cosine of theta equals three over five. So we can create a right triangle, theta, where cosine the adjacent, five to hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. Pythagorean says four. So now in the original problem, you see all that stuff there in the middle? Cosine inverse of three-fourths, that can get replaced by theta because we said cosine inverse of three-fifths, rather, three-fifths. Cosine inverse of three-fifths equals theta. So with an eraser, I could erase all of this, and that stuff can get replaced by theta, which is convenient, because theta is right there. So just given the cotangent of theta, and we're done. So from here, cotangent, cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Done, done, done. Next question. 19. We have the sine of the tangent inverse, the arc tangent of square root three over six. Similar process, let that equal, let tangent inverse of square root three six equal some angle theta. That tells us that the tangent of theta equals square root three sixths. And that leads to a picture, tangent is Sokotoa, opposite over adjacent. And then Pythagorean should give you 36 plus 3 is the square root 39 from Pythagorean. All right. So the inner function creates this diagram, especially when there's an inverse, right? And now that we have the picture there, we know all the inner content can get replaced by the angle that you allowed it to equal, theta. And I'll give me sine of theta and we're done. So sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. I would be okay if you left it like that, but if you wanted to simplify that, you can simplify it on your calculators or by hand, whatever. You get square root 13 over 13 if you wanted to rationalize the denominator. I won't be picking. Either one is totally fine. 
Last question is error analysis. So what's wrong with the picture for number 20? Well, I'm, I'm assuming you have the paper in front of you. If you notice, A, B, H, and K. We, we could quickly identify A, B, H, and K. So our A value is negative three, our B is two, our K is negative four pi, our H is negative four pi fifths, and our K is six, right? A, B, H, and K. So that means that your middle line should be six. Your high line should be nine, and your bottom line should be three, because the middle is always K. And from K, you go up and down the absolute value of whatever A happens to be. A is negative, so we anticipate that the sine wave should go down first and then up. There's is backwards. There's goes up and then it goes down. So that's no bueno. And now our start point here should be H, negative 4 pi over 5, comma, K. They have positive 4 pi over 5, and, and their K is way off as well, because their three lines were off, and the start point was off, because they put positive, but it should be negative, right? And of course, uh, the end point was also off, uh, because the start point was off. Although that doesn't technically have to happen, but for them it was. I think what was correct for them, I think the only thing right for them did they get the period right for that one? I think they even messed up the period <laughs> for, for that one, there, which is good because there's a lot of errors and we want you to be able to be like, all right, this is how they messed up. So it looks like the period should be, the graph has a period of pi. Oh no, actually, you know what? Yeah, look, the period's fine. Yeah, the period for that graph is fine, but everything else was a total botch. Yeah, they, they got everything else wrong. So you guys can expect... Uh, things like this on the midterm, this this level of math, this level of difficulty, maybe just half as long as we discussed in class. So if you guys have any questions about anything, just email me and I'll gladly respond with anything that you want me to elaborate on. Okay, But if not, I'll see you guys Tuesday night. Bye.